Step number one to making better coffee. Turn on your Keurig, open the lid, now add your favorite coffee pot, and here's the part that a lot of people screw up. Take your Keurig and place it directly in the garbage. Now you're ready to make a great cup of coffee. It can be overwhelming going into a grocery store to pick out a good brand of coffee. You might have heard of the paradox of choice. We usually think of choice as a good thing, but when we have too many options, we enter a state of paralysis. And once we finally do make our selection, we're more likely to be dissatisfied. We have buyer's remorse, a feeling that we've made the wrong decision. The remedy here? Do a little bit of research and ask around. Figure out what your local coffee shop uses. Experimenting with different roasts and brands is part of the fun. Don't let the paradox of choice stop you. I like this coffee. I've invited a barista over for this video so he can watch me as I make this cup. Not because I want him to approve my technique, but because I'm going to piss him off and I want to see his reaction. I use this large Chemex because it makes multiple cups of coffee, which is nice when I have guests over. You might want to look at the AeroPress or V60 pour over for individual cups. To make this cup, I'll also need a paper filter, a kettle, a coffee cup, and ground coffee. That's it. I don't use a grinder. And it's because I usually go through a full bag in two weeks. So to keep things simple, I just grind it all at the grocery store. You are embarrassing yourself. All right, let's fill up the kettle with filtered water. Bring your water to a boil. From there, pour the boiling water over the paper filter. This removes some of the paper taste that would make its way through. And make sure you ditch the water from the filter. Oftentimes, people use a thermometer to measure their water, but I found that that's not totally necessary. You've got to be kidding me. I'll admit that in my experience, using boiling water has killed the flavor of the coffee, but I've heard recommendations anywhere from 180 degrees to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Within that range, I really haven't noticed a difference. Oh, that right there? That's bullshit. To get inside that range without using a thermometer, take off the lid to the kettle and let it sit for a minute or two. Add two scoops of coffee and level out the coffee by shaking the Chemex. Now pour a little bit of water on top of the grinds to moisten the coffee. This is called blooming. It removes gas compounds and elevates the... I honestly have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just reading this from a website online, but apparently they say that it's an important step. Wait 30 seconds or so, and then add the rest of your water, slowly circling in and out. I'm not doing a great job right now because I'm, you know, I'm trying to film at the same time as pour this coffee, so I, I messed up a little bit. Try not to hit the paper filter or the water will just shoot down the sides, creating a weaker cup. I don't perfectly measure the amount of water I use when making coffee. At this point, I kind of eyeball it. I hate you. Go get a job at Starbucks, okay? You're bullshit. This is the accent. And now we wait. The coffee should drip down over the course of about two to three minutes. Dispose of the filter and you're ready to pour your coffee. Admittedly, this process takes a little bit longer than the Keurig, but I found that I could turn the simple act of making coffee into a mindfulness practice. It helps me to be more present, more patient, and well, it just, it tastes a lot better. If you're the kind of person that likes coffee and great conversation, you might like my podcast. It's called The Ground Up Show. The Ground Up Show, give me a break. Oh, nice play on words. I talk with really interesting people from all different backgrounds about life, freelancing, entrepreneurship, making it as a creative, and other things like that. You can get the podcast at groundupshow.com. Thanks for watching.